Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Joel and Adam. And today we're going to be talking about The Jade Raksha, a 1968 film directed by Ho Meng Hua and starring Cheng Pei Pei. This is part of our Remembrance Month of Cheng Pei Pei. We're just covering Cheng Pei Pei films, and we've selected three. Jade Raksha is the second. Uh, Dragon Swamp was the first, and we'll talk about the third, you know, down the line in a couple of weeks. Um, the Jade Raksha is about a fearsome swordwoman known as the Jade Raksha who appears in the martial world and begins killing people whose surname is Yan. That is the IMDb description. And I think they, 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 they distilled it to its essence, which I think is laudable in that normally the, um, the IMDb's for these, for a lot of these wuxia movies, I think because they're obscure, they sometimes essentialize it, but then still somehow miss the point. Um, yeah. the, the only thing here is obviously it misses the you could read this and have no idea what a wonderful movie this is because it just sounds like a simple revenge revenge film and it's it's a lot more than that um yep. so i don't know before we get into it joel i know this was your first time seeing it so why don't you tell us how, you, how your reaction to the movie oh my god i i love this movie um i don't know how i slept on this dude it, it's incredible. I think I described it as a kung fu opera when I was watching the last of it here. Just a second, I gotta go to you guys. Um, yeah, that's perfect. This movie has everything. Um, oh god, I don't even know where to begin praising it. I think that in itself is some pretty high praise. Um, okay, so the story is really solid, and beyond being solid, it's told in this really interesting way where you're constantly getting a drip feed of new, incredibly dramatic information that consistently makes you reevaluate the situation along with the characters. So you're really along for the ride in this huge roller coaster um, of, of all kinds of emotions. So uh, there's um, a, we'll, we'll get to the scene, uh, which I don't think you guys know what scene I'm talking about, where I said, it's like, oh my God, this, this is exactly what I didn't know that I needed. Um, but yeah, that scene completely changes your evaluation of everything that's happening in the film. Um, and it happens a couple times. That is like the first one. It's a huge impact. The performances are stellar. And I, and I mean, like, every performance in this film is memorable. And, and it really, it rings with its own, like, note. It's gorgeous. The score is really good, which I'm not used to with these kind of films. Usually they're, they're sort of, they're not bad. They're, they're pretty, they're, they're serviceable. Yeah, they're a little placeholder, a little John Carpentery. That's right, John Carpenter. I'm gonna get a dig in you at you. Um, no, I just got I just purchased Escape from New York and I watched it for the first time recently. And I was uh -huh. struck by how John Carpenter the score was about it. But that's not <laughs> it's a great movie, by the way. Go watch Escape from New York. Um, yeah. But uh I, I'm I'm I am i am not just here to dunk on John Carter's inability to score a movie. I'm also here to praise this movie's ability to score itself. The cinematography was was breathtaking in some places like well, i actually had to pause the film it took me a little longer to watch it than i should have just because yeah. i was like pausing to just be like this is like a painting so yeah and i'm not even scratched the surface like, i do think movie i've got to own i do think that some of the music i could be wrong because i didn't go and check this but i believe some of the music was snippets of morricone i could be wrong but oh, really um, i think so it sounds a, a lot of these movies but i mean i if you're gonna borrow from somebody yeah, yeah I just borrow, borrow from him you know, it's 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 probably the most fitting music for the genre. Cheng Che does it all the time. Um, yeah. I could be wrong because it's just a handful of notes, but I feel like it came from like. Uh, you could describe some of Morricone's career in he did so much with a handful of notes, though. Yeah. Like. Yeah. If any yeah. can, anyone, I, I would I would give it to him. You know, give and, me, and give I could be five wrong. Notes. I could be wrong because I, ju I just said, oh, I think that's from, but I didn't actually bother to go and compare them or anything Ooh. like that. Um, Ooh, that doesn't diminish it for me, though. That actually kind of makes me no, respect it more. I, I, think that, um, I think I was actually thinking about this today. I was thinking about, like, in my head, if I were to do, like, a movie soundtrack lifting music from other sources, how I would do it. And there's an art, I think, to... That's what Tarantino find... does. No, that's, that's, he, does, no, that's, that's, that's yeah. he just pulls out fantastic music that's already been created, puts it in his movie. Well, right. and you, well, that's, well, that's what I'm I was not... thinking of. That, that, yeah, exactly. It's, if you're um, going to sample, man, sample from someone like that. You know, yeah. The Wu-Tang Clan did that to great effect. And, I mean, I wonder where they got their name. So. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, 
uh, Adam, I, I don't know if you've talked about this movie either before either. So did you have any thoughts? I don't on think I've talked act? about it. I, yeah, I, I got this movie maybe a year ago and I watched it at the time and I loved it and I haven't talked to anyone. So I've been, well, as soon as we brought up doing Chang Peng Ping, it was like, let's do Jade Raksha. Every time we bring it up, let's do Jade Raksha. <laughs> and yeah. And I mean, you know, as, uh, as Joel says, this movie there's there's a lot going on, but it's never convoluted. The slow drip comment yeah. Joel made is perfect. It's like it you you get something, you get interested, then it feeds you the next thing. Yeah. You're never lost or confused because sometimes sometimes whoosh movies can kind of get to that point where there's so much oh. going on, but it is methodical in the way it pulls yeah. out the plot points. I, I don't it's think different. I've ever been confused by a homing hua storyline he's really good at making clear functional deep storytelling um yep. yeah my 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 reaction to it i i i was looking for this movie for ages because i knew about it but it yep. wasn't available on dvd and eventually some years ago now i tracked it down on um on vcd and i watched it on vcd but as you can probably imagine i had no idea what it looked like i didn't know the beauty of it because i saw it on this really crappy yep. low-res tiny sort of screen and um it, the storytelling was great i liked the movie but then it wasn't till that shout factory box yeah. set came that i was able to see it for like in its totality and it's it's yeah. a it, again it's it's a it's it's a really uh as joel said it's very dramatic it it, had, it makes excellent use of this backstory that you kind of keep getting more information about it's filled with melodrama and this interesting take on revenge that's kind of an old theme but the way that he handles it here and obviously this is 68 so you know it's maybe wow, this not quite as old, but, yeah um you know but yeah. the way that he handles sort of the cycle of revenge as an idea is so beautiful like, like a is. lot of movies do that but this movie really hammers home that you know like what that means um and also just the characters just like the, the love triangle it's got everything that you want in a wuxia movie but it doesn't feel kitchen sink. It feels like everything belongs. No. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. no, it, it's it's beautifully arrayed and blended in this artistic way. So yeah, it, it's a big movie, both conceptually and it's. A, I think it's not so much big, although the scope is pretty impressive. It's deep, right? Yeah, and it, it's deep in a way where you can see it from the surface. Like I, I remember going to, to a Jacob's Cave back when I lived in Missouri, and they have this this part where. There's this like crystal on the floor that's under a small amount of water. And when you look down there, you can see like not only like can you see this incredible actual physical depth of like clear crystal and like the rock formations under, but you are also looking back in time because this was created by this sediment that happened over centuries. That's what it's like watching this film. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a work yeah. of absolute beauty. Yeah, I agree with that. It's I guess it's like the iceberg theory, but the iceberg is not hidden by the waves. You can see the yeah, yeah, it's the cross section iceberg. iceberg. Um, and now I know you wanted to talk about the landscape. Speaking of icebergs, even I like, though I this like movie the has no actual icebergs. Um, <laughs> what, what was what was it you observed about the landscapes that made you want to talk about? Well, it, the film keeps doing. I, I'm a big Kubrick fan, so I always notice a long shot when it comes into a okay. movie. Uh, and it's very common to do like this this broad Dutch angle in uh, wuxia films. So you kind of get to you have these intimate things where you have people like that are sitting at a tea house talking. This cross reverse, uh, re this is the shot reverse shot where the, like you're cutting back between people. And the other really classic one you see a lot is that Dutch angle where you can kind of see this whole uh, soundstage and they fight in it. And tea house fights are really like they're very common in wuxia yeah. films. So I'm very used to seeing that. And when I see it, it's so common. It's it's such a, a simple way to direct something, and it's so it's used so much. It's kind of invisible to me. I don't really notice the cinematography. Mm -hmm. But this movie kept catching my attention visually, which is a little rare for this because okay. it would just kind of it would go outside, which is a little unusual, and it would just pull back in these huge scopes where you yeah. could see this gigantic amount of the scenery, and it didn't really lose the plot as far as what was happening. These a lot of these reaction scenes. Or they were like dramatic scenes, like when they're on the bridge the first time and the last, yeah. where they're pulling back and you see the mountains in the background. It's, the scope of it's really impressive. And it's beautiful. Like the structure of the shot itself is worth looking at, like it's a painting. And the movie does that. It doesn't do, it doesn't overuse that. 
but it used it enough that like I really didn't dare to look away from this film because I didn't want to miss anything like that. So I wanted, I wanted to pay attention. I wanted to draw attention to it because like not a lot of films do that in general, and especially it's it's especially rare in wuxia films, uh, which yeah. are sound staging movies. To back up your point there, like even even in the you know obviously there are outside scenes in this movie, but even on the on the indoor set scenes, like the one with the duel that happened like twenty years earlier between the people mm, yeah. where they're 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 they're, yeah, they're sparring on the mountain, it's like yeah, just the, the way they've got the fog kind of going through the edge, and you can see the yep. mountain in the background. It's a set, but it it just it just has this fantastic. It's the set is used so much better than it is in a lot of Shaw movies. That shot is. That shot is bold, too, because they don't put the actors in the center. They put them yes. slightly off center to the left. And yes. so you, you, it feels like you're you're seeing them from a distance, like you're on that winding path. Yeah. You really you are very feel, much a spectator. You feel like you're on the edge of it, too, because they're yes. fr framed that way. So it gives you that sense of, like, if you've ever driven on the side of a mountain kind of a feeling. <laughs> yeah, and you kind of kind of you get a chance to sort of peek over when you're on the very edge of those turns. And it feels like that. Like, yeah. you kind of, you're almost like... You're spying on this almost. Like you're, yeah. you're also a peeping tom. Which which is interesting because of the plot twist we find out with that scene as well. Um, yeah. But yeah. I guess that gets into sort of like the idea of realism versus theater. And also I think the use of atmosphere in this movie. Like the, yeah. the opening shot is very atmospheric. And the whole character is like she's this haunting swordswoman who sings before she kills you. She, you know, she, and 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 <laughs> and she's called the Jade Raksha because they think of her as like this ghost or spirit that you know is coming for revenge. Um, I I really like the opening for that reason because it's just so haunting and magical looking, and it really uh, sets everything up. But I think the whole movie has that kind of heightened sense of reality yeah well having having all the 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 villagers kind of running into their houses when they hear the yeah. scene it's like it just gives you that aspect that jade Raksha is this legendary figure yeah. it just sets that up before you even see the character and what a stone cold thing to do singing like an eerie song as loud as you can to announce you're about to kill your enemies like it, it's a great opener Right, and every time it happens in the movie, you almost get chills from it. Yeah, right. yeah. The song is they pick the right song. That's for, an eerie yeah. song. Um, I, I love that the the minstrels that we get later in the movie just kind of start singing it because they're like, "Oh, that was a cool song." Yeah, and then they almost get killed because of it, right? The yeah. Well, what's interesting too is, I mean, we'll get into that when we get into storytelling. But I just want to point out how that little detail is how well woven this whole film is, where that's how they get the, those two characters, those incidental bards who are singing the song and get wrapped up in things they become instrumental to the plot and the way that yeah. like it, but but i think maybe we should talk about jade raksha as a character because um oh yeah and, you know uh you know we're talking about the song already and and i feel like i don't know i i, I really like I mean, Cheng Pei Pei is always really good, but this is a dark character, I think. Mm -hmm. And, she, you know, she not only is she like singing about, you know, I'm, you know, <laughs> how she's going to kill somebody. She's specifically going after members of the Yan family. And she's doing so because they murdered her. Somebody from the Yan family murdered her family, but she doesn't know which Yan. So yeah. and there's 20 so Yan brothers. Yeah, <laughs> that's my all. favorite. That's almost a comedy beat when she's like, "Well, I don't know who did it," and there's 20 brothers. There's, I that, love. That. I will say the, the comedy that that is one thing about this movie. Chang Pei Pei's performance in this is often really funny. I mean, she's just really good. This is no by no means a comedy, yeah. but she know she is so good at being funny like in the early in scene where she's listening to the people talk about her and flicking oh, yeah. the nuts over at them and oh it's yeah so yeah that she, scene, she is great that scene is worth mentioning because there's these guys there everybody's talking about the jade rock show <laughs> and these these villagers who clearly are not skilled in martial arts or anything they start they start trying to one-up each other talking about how oh maybe she's a promiscuous ghost and you know like and then they just <laughs> yeah. kind of basically start trashing her and and she starts throwing peanuts at them and again what's interesting about that is that's where the other guy that becomes essential yep. um uh zhu ying hao he sees her doing that and he intercepts the peanut and then they have this very indirect conversation about the jade raksha where you kind of get the sense that he knows that she's the Jade Rock. Yeah. She, she knows that he knows, but there's plausible deniability. And so it's, 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 again, it's just one of these kind of scenes that you see in these films a lot. But, um, 
but yeah, I, I, I again to go to bring it back to your comment about the humor, the I I I just love the um the way that she, uh, like when when she's being sarcastic and mm -hmm. she thinks yep. that she thinks that Zhu Yin uh, Yin Hao is um is 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 either not fully on board with her revenge scheme against the Yans or is sympathetic to them. You know, she she's just like, oh, so he's a noble man. You think he's this wonderful guy? <laughs> That's so uh, right. Yeah, and yeah. She just keeps doing that throughout the movie. Um, but yeah, yeah, I really like her. Character. Um, yeah, she's a I'll great say too character. On her character. It, it's funny. It's funny. It's the same director as the Lady Hermit because, in a lot of ways. <laughs> In Lady Hermit, she's the more the older, more experienced character, and she's dealing with this impulsive, out of control young character. And it's like here, like this, this, the 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 script is completely flipped. It's like you've yeah. got the the guy in this is kind of the equivalent of the Lady Hermit, and she's the the young character. It's like whoa, whoa, get get a handle on yourself here. <laughs> it's uh, it, well, I, that that really struck me watching it this time. But he plays with a lot of the same themes from that movie in Lady Hermit, yeah. I think, intentionally. Yeah. Um, you know, like 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 down to stuff like the whole thing when she comes into the village and she's singing and everybody hides. There's that whole subplot in Lady Hermit where they have to put the talismans on the doors or the people come in dressed as ghosts. Yes. And murder, you know, so. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. But uh, but yeah, I, ju I just think this is like a very dark. But as Adam pointed out, dark with like a twinkle in the eye kind of a character like she mm -hmm. there's a scene where there's a love triangle in the movie where you know she's in love with uh Zhu Ying Hao and Zhu Ying Hao is in love with the 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 woman who sang the song what's her name um uh Yin Feng and when she finds out that they're in love and that they might get married she immediately she just starts swinging a sword at her she's ready to kill yeah. her yeah, and um, he has to keep kind of like being like don't yeah. don't don't murder don't yeah. murder <laughs> yeah <laughs> They've got a really good dynamic, although, and I'm kind of sad they didn't wind up together. Um, spoilers, <laughs> yeah, <me> but <laughs> I, yeah, I, I would say the weakest character probably is the uh, love interest he w winds up with. I felt like, uh, you know, I felt like yeah, that could have been, that could've been done better. Well, I well, think it's, I, I think you've got a lot they... of charisma with with uh, Jade Rocha, right? It's hard yeah. to root against that character, even if she is kind of a firebrand. So yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're supposed to, in a way, kind of root for her having him in the end and and wondering why he's going with, you know, Ying Feng, who's so vanilla in comparison. Yeah. Right. Like it's just I mean, yeah. she's obviously but obviously what he doesn't want somebody like Jade Rockshaw. That's well, kind of uh, yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. You know, but but it's it frustrates you as a viewer that they don't end up. In, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean that's kind of part of the beauty of this movie, you know. I don't want everything yeah. that I want. I want to be denied a little bit, you know. Yeah. And and this movie understands that. It, it's it's disciplined with the elements that it puts in. It's true to its characters. And I think maybe that's the great strength of the film is that I, you fall in love with these characters. Like I'm yeah. over the moon about them. I'm gonna think about these guys in my dying day. They're really just—they're good, man. And yeah, I, no, he knows how to prioritize story for sure. Because it's—it's—it's it's, it's like you say. It's like the thing that if you were in control, you would—you would say, "Well, I want these characters to be together. So this is what's gonna happen." And then yeah. you'd have this whole part of the movie that doesn't occur because you're not. Okay. You know, you're not servicing well, the story anymore. So right, it, a lot of this movie is about kind of thwarting your expectations and desires as a viewer. And weirdly, I love that because the scene is that you, you want you want Zoo to get his revenge, right? But he doesn't. He really never well, does. Well, 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 let's talk about his revenge scene because that's one of the most you know pivotal scenes in the film. That's that is he the scene for me yeah. of this film. Yeah. So he he meets Jade Raksha. And they become friends after initially being kind of enemies. And I guess you could say they're sort of what people might call frenemies throughout the yeah. movie. Like there's varying degrees <laughs> of friendliness. Yeah, um, he has this, but, this interesting relationship with her where he, he's kind of doing the same thing she is. Like they're both on a revenge for my family kick yeah. right? where they meet. So he's like, on the one hand, he's like, well, I'm sympathetic to that, but you can't just kill innocent people. And he's well, really so about that. And the movie's smart because it sets that up. Ooh. Well, and that's the thing. They meet, and then he's like, "Okay, I have to go." And I have to, he's basically going to get revenge for the person who killed his father. So he's on the same path 
path as she is, as you mentioned. But then he goes there, and I forget who's the, who. Uh, who is it he's looking for? Shi Yong San? Is that the? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Is it Shi Yong Song? It is, isn't it? I think. It? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know that's correct. Um, I wanted to make sure I didn't get confused because there's a uh, there's a twist, and I want to make sure I got it yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so Shi Yong San, and he goes to the village, and he and he calls him out, and some drunk guy's like, "I'm Shi Yong Song, and you know I've <laughs> killed a lot of people I don't even remember, but yeah, I did it." And so he, and then he he just dispatches the guy because he's useless, and um, mm. and then there's this great scene where he's he's sort of he's, he's sheathing his sword, and he's got this like victorious I've just done justice look, but everything around him is chaos, and it's clear if you're paying attention to the background that something's wrong with the situation. Like, the, and, and then it comes yeah. to light that he killed the wrong guy. Um, you know, and it's kind of, it's almost, it's almost on the cusp of being a Monty Python scene. Cause it's like, Oh, you know, <laughs> he wasn't Shi Yong San. He was Shi Yong. You no, know, it was, it was Shi, yeah. but with an X instead of an SH. So it was like a yep. slightly different pronunciation. <laughs> and yeah, which from a drunk guy, it's like, <laughs> which adds the thing. It's like, yeah, I slur in his speech and yeah. you're like, ah, oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, well, having the, the kid too running up and like crying and stuff too. So you've got the auditory thing and you hear the villagers all murmuring like, oh, what, yeah. what, what's going on? There's the, the sound of that scene. It adds a lot to Yeah, that. I think the sound is it's the undercurrent where we're paying attention to the audience. You can tell this guy's kind of blinded in his quest for vengeance, though. Yeah. You know, and right after he's crowing about it, it's like, hey, it, it kind of reminds me of Django Unchained, actually, where it's like, hey, look, I know you all think this is horrible, but trust me, I just did justice here. This yeah. needs to happen. This guy's a scoundrel. And then they're all like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, I our village 20 years ago. This is an unrelated dude you just murdered in cold blood. And he's like, yeah. oh, no. And, but, like, you can tell this, the acting in this scene yeah. keeps it from being, like, who, I think. What's yeah. really good, too, is he's already a character before he even got to that village. You feel like, oh, this guy's as developed as he's going to get because he's the more mature, more stable character. And yes. then he goes and does this, and he's like, oh, my God. I, and he peace bonds his weapon. Like, he ties it up with a um, with a piece of cloth from the dead guy, and he's just like, I'm never going to kill again. Um and doesn't he and leave it by the body where the son just vowed revenge against him when he grows up? Like, yeah, the cycle of revenge that he has become a part of. And he's like, he's like, he doesn't even say, don't do that, kid. He's like, nah, nah, it's going to happen. It's OK. I deserve this. I'm going to go home. Well, that, that's the other part of this movie. It, it's sort of a loose thread, but like the kid vows revenge and you know that that's going to happen eventually. You it's, know, sure. Yeah, this guy. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it made me think a little bit of Kill Bill, the, the early scene in that, where she's yep. like, okay, if you feel bad about this, come get me. <laughs> to, the, to the daughter in that scene, it's a yeah. similarity there. I mean, yeah, I know, it, it definitely uh, it definitely feels similar to that moment. That that was the thing that sort of popped to mind. Uh, on yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it, it, but it, it also really kind of sets the whole tone for the movie from that point forward, because it's it's... It, it is a revenge movie, but it's about how messy revenge is, how how if you don't have all of the facts, you could you could get something horribly wrong. And yeah, uh, well, if you find out, even if you'd found the right person, it still would have been the wrong thing to do, yeah. as we find yeah. out later yeah. in the movie. That's the brilliant that, that's like the second time watching this. I'm like, oh, even <laughs> well, let's get into that, because what ends up happening, we were talking about the love triangle and the way that that comes about is he meets the Ku Fung character and his daughter. And it turns out that the Ku Fung character is actually Shi Yong San. And he falls in love with the daughter and Gu Fung, when he, when he goes to take the daughter to um, uh, uh, Zhu Ying Hao's house, the mother sees him and she recognizes him right away. And then it just becomes this secret between Gu Fung and the mom. And, yep. and, and there's a heartbreaking scene with those two where they're talking about yeah, the past. Yeah. And the acting in that one, I openly wept. I'm a weepy yeah. dude when I watch movies. But Jesus Christ, hearing that guy's voice crack when he's confessing about like what happened in the circumstances where he killed what turned out to be actually one of his best friends accidentally in this mad feud over her. And then he threw himself off the cliff. But he didn't die. He just got blinded like it was uh, 
uh, Rapunzel or something and, like that. Well, it was the yeah. thorns. I love the image. You don't actually see the thorns, I don't think, but the no. thorns, no. the thorns in the fall, cut his eyes, and it just seems very poetic. Um, and also the fact, like you said, he hurled himself off the mountain. It's it's a very moving scene. I agree. I think him, Gu well, Kung, and the woman. His delivery um, is what makes that. Just, yeah, just his Man plea Sao. too. His plea that you know, it's like I, I just want my daughter to be happy and marry your son. Do we have to? Do we yeah. have to ruin this? <laughs> <laughs> you can kill me. That's fine. Go ahead and kill me. But yeah, he even offers that. He's like, yeah, no, go ahead and kill me. I'm worthless. But let let's let the yeah. kids live. We got to think about them. Yeah. And then the, then yeah. the final twist that Adam alluded to, which is that it wasn't even him that did it. like he, the, the, he, he killed the <laughs> yep. father on his sword. But it was because this other scheming character, who's the main villain of the of the film, the, the yawn that she's actually seeking, uh, which, again, it shows how everything just kind of all wraps together in the end. He 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 had a vendetta against uh, Zhu Yin Hao, Ying Hao's father, and he kicked he was hiding in a bush and he kicked him into the sword or pushed him into the sword. Yeah. And. Yeah. And so, and then I guess, the, and and then the reason that he murdered Cheng Pei Pei's parents is because her father witnessed the events and then ran home. Yep. And, and he so he go goes there. and he kills the whole family, yeah. inadvertently sparing her. Which, by the way, that's kind of a brutal scene too, because you see the beginning of the slaughter, and it's it's the father at the door getting the swords thrust through him, and the camera kind of pans over and he's killing the mom. But then it's panning over to her, the younger sister, and her older brother, who's like maybe a year older than her. Just like in yeah. the corner. Yeah. So you're like, Jesus Christ, that's brutal, man. Yeah. No wonder yeah. she's yeah. so messed up. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then to top it off, the main villain, who's um, uh, Master Yan Tianlong, I think. Um, he's Ooh. such a bad... He, he's like... He, he, everybody <laughs> in town thinks he's this this altruistic, you know, generous person. He even well, has I, uh, Zhu Ying Hao's mother wrapped around his finger because he mm -hmm. takes care well, of her. Uh Oh, go ahead. Yeah, we first see him too. They've got the, the you know they translate little slogan on his wall. It's like always do good or something like yeah. that. Maybe maybe think of Google's Google's old you know yeah. don't be evil. It's like like well you know Google's evil and they have a motto <laughs> like that. <laughs> don't you understand the smile under the mustache of Big Brother? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it's it's very much that. It, he's an absolute. He's an absolute worm. I love to hate that character because he wraps yeah. himself in all this propriety and like charity and this illusion, this utter illusion of goodness. Yeah, he's but he's doing just a kitchen. brat. He's he doing is. Yeah. But, oh, what an absolute viper. I love to loathe this monster. And he's got a whole cartoon dungeon underneath his house I there. Yeah. It's <laughs> I, I love it's the scene where he captured. Oh, God. Oh, there's he, so much to love. He cure he helps cure Zhu Ying Hao's mother, who's ailing while Zhu Ying Hao is away. The reason he does it is because he knows Zhu Ying Hao is a skilled martial artist, and he's gonna he wants yeah. to use his talents. Yeah, he's moving his little chess yeah. pieces around. Uh, yeah. But but it takes Zhu Ying Hao a long time to realize how nefarious he is, and at one point he discovers the dungeon, and he's still not fully convinced because he gets this like half baked explanation. Uh, from yeah. Master Yan, who's like, oh, you know, back in the day, it used to be a war-torn country, and my yeah, ancestors I love that. had to have all these traps. To, and he's like, but I forgot about them, even though I it was the first I thing I inherited that yeah. dungeon. I didn't build that to torture my enemies or anything. And it's, Despite and it's the like, fact yeah, I have modern guillotines in there, it's no, it's not. It's the most cartoonish. Of, it's got like all these gears and guillotines. Oh, I know it, that's such a <laughs> wacky dungeon. And again, in a lesser film, it would be comedy, right? Or it would at least be kind of goofy as an element. But, I don't know, they managed to make it genuinely menacing. Probably yeah. because the first time you see it, he's ruthlessly murdering and dispatching useless <laughs> yeah. idiots in it. They even like have this great uh, shot where a guy's, they, they, they guillotine a guy's hands and head. Yeah. And they go yeah. flying off yeah, and blood sprays out. It's great. You're used to seeing the head get decapitated in a guillotine, but not the hands and the yeah. head. That's the part that really... You know, adds something. the exclamation point to that scene. Well, you can uh, tell it, it reveals something truly sadistic and cruel at the core of this guy. And you see that again when he captures Jade Rosh and he's talking about cutting into a million pieces. Like, it's not a little thing he does in this dungeon. This is where his soul resides. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's, that's, that's him. That's him. What a great and metaphor just... for the character, too, right? There's this horrible death <laughs> yeah. in the yeah. underneath this beautiful palace. It's yeah. like virtue yeah. is great. Oh, my. I didn't even think about it as a metaphor. 
God, and he's got this a... despicable little son who's just like a, oh. a rat. <laughs> what like, an urchin he is. <laughs> yeah. I know. Even the uh, scene where he like just has a friendly duel with uh, Zhu Ying Hao. You know, oh, yeah. And, he, and, he's, and you can just tell he just like gleefully just wants to hurt the guy. And he doesn't understand how outmatched he is. Um, yep. And yeah. as soon as it's revealed to him, he storms off in a yep. huff. Oh, God. And he like he doesn't like out loud swear some kind of blood debt against him, but he's constantly worming his way, yeah. undermining him yeah. after that. I mean, it's, yeah, cause the thing is, it's like, okay, your father's brought in this guy who's a master kung fu guy to train you, and you're just resentful that he's better than you. It's like, you know, and he, and he says, oh, fantastic, I've got someone who's going to teach me awesome kung fu. It's like, no, I, I, I he, he, he just can't even be on that level. It's like, he has to be the best, even though he's yeah just a, just a Yeah, class. he doesn't even appreciate the fact that he's got this great teacher. That's going yeah, to yeah, it's 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 definitely the case with him. He's 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 incapable of understanding that because it's all ego. Um, but which again, probably you know, it should be a sign to everybody that maybe the father isn't as virtuous as he <laughs> as he seems. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing too about this movie is the ending, which again uh, connects very clearly to Lady Hermit. Like that's definitely something that you see in Lady yeah. Hermit. Yeah, yeah. But the, I love the fact that like. You know, uh, the 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 bad guy kidnaps his mother and and the Yin Fung character, um, his 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 wife to be, uh, and we won't get it. You know, there's a whole interesting story of how that happens, but we won't necessarily need to dive into that. <laughs> and and he has to go to the Jade Rock to ask for her help, and she's like, "Well, okay, I'll help you, but what am I going to get out of it?" And and so she's like, "Okay, if you agree to like uh, to never see Yin Fung again." And you agree to marry me, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get all of it. And and the thing is, again, I think we're kind of rooting for her. We're like, okay, you know what? I think it's better that he ends up with her anyway. So you know, uh, you know. Yeah, no, um, I I one hundred percent wanted that. I know that there is some element where he didn't want that to happen. But dude, think about me. I want it to happen. Yeah. <laughs> This isn't about you anymore. Well, Q. it seems like they're a better match. You're like, how is a guy like Ju Ying Hao not going to get bored with Yin Fung in the first 20 minutes of that? You know what I mean? Like, uh, the Jade Raksha can challenge him and keep him interested. Do you know that? That sort it's of better for his balance of chi. Yeah. I'm, t I'm telling you, man, you're gonna you're gonna ruin your cultivation, dude. But but then at the end, she ultimately you know decides to do the right thing and. She she ends up peace bonding her weapon and giving it to them as as uh, I guess a token or a wedding gift because she says I can't. Well, um, earlier in the film, she says that like, hey, look, if you kill this guy, I'll live a life of peace like yeah. you want me to, you know. And that that's not exactly what transpires. I do think that she winds up killing him. I I was talking to you guys while I was watching the climactic finale of this film. I think she cuts him up with a sword really bad in the last scene. Which, by the she way. Does. She does. She, it's a yeah, spectacular it, it, final death scene, too. Whatever. Yeah, I, I love watching it. Like, it's theater blood, right? It's really bright red and kind of unrealistic. But it's the guy, it's combined with the guy's acting. It's one of the most impactful scenes in the film. Yeah. Because, and I love that he's clearly outmatched, even in his initial little clash with her. He actually spends most of that fight scene running away. And they yeah. finally get to the point where they're at the very, very end. They're, they're in like a swamp or something in an old abandoned temple. And they finally have just their showdown. And she's not toying with them, but she's definitely on another level. Yeah. So she hits him and doesn't kill him like seven or eight times. And he's just getting more and more mutilated and bloody. And it's it's like the guy's acting is incredible. You can tell like his character is slowly coming to realize that he's about to die. And it's, yeah. it's almost her, heartbreaking because of just how brutal it is. Yeah, her, I, I love also just how indignant she looks in a lot of these scenes. And yeah. the, the expression I always like with Cheng Pei Pei, she widens her eyes. Almost like how a boxer widens their eyes. You know, like, like they train, you know, people... That is a boxer move. Yeah, well, because they have to keep their eyes open. That's their, their always, you know, that's like the key to, to, to seeing things that are incoming. And I feel like that's kind of what she's telegraphing in the cinematic language is you know that her character is is aware of all the incoming blows when she so when she goes to make a strike she has her eyes wide open um but just the the emotional intensity of her character in those moments is uh, especially that revenge scene um mm. and i like the fact that the other characters don't have to help her with that they had to help her deal with all of the minions and all of the 
all of the things that made getting to him a challenge, but she's able to deal with getting getting revenge herself, which I like. Because in some movies, that's sometimes taken away from a character by the other. Yeah, they, they really yeah. let her get her revenge in this movie. Yeah. And, and, and and again, it, it in the language that the movie is communicating to us, it's saying that some revenge is justified. There's a broader justification to her revenge. It's not just personal anymore. She's doing something that is good. She's, she's vanquishing a really horrible villain. It's not just... I'm blinded by righteousness, I'm taking my bloody revenge. At this point in the film, she's carrying out justice, which is what the guy who, blinded by revenge, inadvertently created a cycle of revenge by murdering an yeah. innocent man, was wanting to do earlier in the film. So there's this fantastic reversal where the more impulsive character winds up doing the more considered, deliberate thing. And, again, holding to her word at the end. She peace bonds her weapon rides off into the sunset to let him live a happy life um it's just it's fantastic well like, i mean what kind of movie does this well also keep in mind this movie is not saying like the mom the number one, i have to say i, I love the mom in this movie number one yeah the mom, really the mom yeah. is burning for revenge too for the father like she she's like when her son comes back she's like when am i gonna get like she's she's very loving yeah. to her son i want it like she's she's a she's a character you're like oh i kind of wish this lady was my mom she's so I don't know, motherly. That lady is kind of my mom. Yeah, my yeah. mom's a little like that. But <laughs> so, but she got yeah. angry, not angry, but she's she's upset because she knows her time is limited. Let's say, and she wants to have closure with the murder of her husband. Um, and so it's 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 something that like you know all of the characters are kind of dealing with this uh, this cycle of revenge. Um, it's not necessarily that's a bad thing. The thing that's bad about what Jade Raksha is doing is she's going around killing every yawn. <laughs> that she can without True. consideration for who the, you know, um, she, I would see, I would take that scene a little different. I would say she just happened to be right in this one case, but I feel like she would have been the same way with this yawn, whether there was evidence or not, because she just had this burning hatred for all of the yawns. Um, but this time she ended up getting confirmation. And so I think that that, that probably had some kind of impact on her character. Um, you know? Well, yeah, I, I don't even think it's a personal thing with her. I think the movie isn't saying that she has grown to the point where she's dispensing justice. She's definitely growing as a character. But I think the movie is saying that revenge versus justice, those are two very distinct things. And there is such a thing as real retributive yeah, justice. Yeah. But there's also such a thing as being like lost on the path to getting there. Yeah, yeah. You know? And you can do it just because of a mistake. You can do it because yeah. you're careless and self-centered. Um, you can do it because you're too blinded by your own emotions to see the full truth. Or maybe it's being concealed from you. But the fact is, this movie almost goes like a court drama, except the court is murder. Yeah. <laughs> well, and when you look at how layered it is, where it is so unclear, like especially with the uh, Zhu Ying Hao character and, and, his, and his father being murdered, there's at least two layers of deception going on there before you even get to the truth. And so... Um, and and in her case, it takes the villain actually confessing what he did because he thinks he's about to kill her. And, well, and you know. notice what happens in that scene, because she's not the only one who misapprehends his nature as yeah. a despicable, you know, uh, villain. Like she, she would see that no matter what. But think about the other character, the deuteragonist of this film. Uh, Chu, whenever he's interacting with him, he sees him as a noble person. And yeah. he's willing to let go of that illusion. So in both their cases, they're mistaken. And yes. it really does take that scene. And in that scene, something brilliant happens. Both of those lies are revealed at once. And all of their prejudice gets dispelled before the actual truth. Yeah. No, it is interesting. because Metaphor for his actual nature. Jesus' this film is smart. This is well, a it's, smart it's, film. It is kind of like a long road to these two characters getting on the same page. Right. Like that's kind of what we're. <laughs> yes. That's actually the perfect way to describe their arc. It's a yeah. long road to these two finally getting on the same. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Because <laughs> there is they're, they're, they're kind of not quite in alignment, but they're friends. But there's this distance between them due to this, you know, misalignment the, the movie until does they a lot with them through the. Yeah. Right. This is this film deserves to be watched more than once. This is a masterpiece. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I, I mean, like it's like no hyperbole. Said, the, yeah, the, like the first time I saw this, I liked it. Then, then I saw it, you know, uh, 
you know, years later again. And I was and I was more impressed the second time. And then watching it this time, it's like, oh, wow, this is like a really impressive film. This is like genuinely. Um, uh, and again, I, 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 I think that it's it's no when you first see it, you, you see how good it is, but you don't realize how the depth of it or something. It's just it's I, just got to. I mean, just, yeah. you guys, I just got done watching this right before yeah. we started. So you guys are hearing me come to these conclusions as we're talking. I, yeah. I'm going to be thinking about this film for a yeah. while, dude. This is, and it's, it's just the strength of the performances. And like, you know, like Joel said, the visuals of it, it, it is just such a rewatchable movie. I mean, it's, yeah, that helps. I, you know, it's, it, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's just, there's so, it works on so many levels. Like there's humor to it. There's huge drama. It's uh, I, yeah, I, I am very happy to own this movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, ve- it's a very good film. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, do we have anything else we want to add about it, or are we... Uh... More than I could possibly add within the remaining time. <laughs> this movie yeah. is a masterpiece. It deserves a place in your library. I, and I don't think I've gone on record and said you need to go and buy a physical copy of this movie very commonly. I strongly recommend this one. I've only got a few actual Wuxia films that I own physical copies of. I've got, like, 8 Niagara and Pole Fighter, Chinese Ghost Story, you know, a couple of the classics. This one's going in the library. I, I can't yeah. live without this movie. I, I That's like not having uh, Citizen Kane in your personal library. Like, it's a mistake. Go do it. Yeah, this is it. a good movie. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. It's a good Cheng Pei Pei performance. And, and again, Ho Meng Hua is a very, you know, I, I don't know if I listed off his movies, but uh, Lady Hermit, Lady of Steel, Monkey Goes West, Cave, Cave of the Silicon Web, uh, Flying Guillotine, Black Magic, Vengeful Beauty, Shaolin Abbott, and Dragon Missile, and those are just a handful of films. He's done a lot of movies, so sometimes you look at his filmography and you almost don't realize, oh, he's done all these really great movies because he's done so many that you don't, that they sort of like are lost in the shuffle of all the films he's done. Um, but but yeah, he's a very good director. And he's very good with story, I think. Um, yeah, so I guess what's the what's the next movie that we're doing, Chimpe? Is it Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Was that the um, was that the I mean, that's on? that's a modern masterpiece too. We may have to. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I saw it in theaters last time I saw it. So Which was the bad. movie? I'm sorry, I got Cro- Crouching just... Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh yeah, let's. Do... I haven't I haven't seen that since it was in the theater, so I'm up for that. I, I got this distracted. I was like, do I own Shallot Abbott and haven't watched it? Oh, I own it. And <laughs> haven't watched it yet. Great, that's going up the pile. But, uh, yeah, that's it. I think Shallot Abbott came movie. in one of those box sets, Adam. You probably do. It have. did. It's in volume yeah. three. I just looked it up on my. See, that's, Joel, that's why I have that list in my computer of all my movies and where they are. Hey, that why? So, I mean, <laughs> people would pick different things, but I would say Vengeful Beauty, Shaolin Abbott, and Flying Guillotine are the three Man, of yeah. films that you should see. Seconding see. Flying Guillotine. I, that's the only one of those I've yeah. seen, and well, it's a good movie. Yeah, it's dude. a good film. It's yeah. a good film. And I think Vengeful Beauty is like a quasi-sequel to that. I feel like it's connected to it. I really? I could be wrong. I, 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 will, I will be watching both over the next few weeks, so I will weigh <laughs> in on it. Yeah. So, Anyways, all right, uh, so we'll end it here, and until next time, we will talk to you later.